Ricardo Junk Guys DFW Dots Net. Today we have a special guest, Michelle Hill from All Junked Up. There you go, a local junk removal service here in the DFW area. I brought her in to the headquarters today to talk about her journey in junk removal. But first, I want to talk about Facebook's webinar that I have coming up this Thursday. It is a private group webinar where I will be talking about how to help entrepreneurs into this business, how to deal with SEO, how to build the blocks to for, for a new junk removal entrepreneur to start building their business, of course. Guys, but first of all, let's talk about this firecracker I got over here to the right of me, Michelle Hill. She is 50 years old. She is five foot even, right? Five foot even. 140 pounds of awesomeness. Now, I've had the, um, the chance to work with Michelle and I, I loved working with you, first of all. Uh, I met her, I wanna tell you my story about Michelle really fast. I met her at the Mini Summit, it was a two, 2021 Mini Summit that I had here in Dallas. And I recognized something about you, I knew you were a hard worker. I could tell the way you were talking, the questions that you were asking, I said to myself, this is someone I wanna work with. So I ended up having an eviction in Fort Worth and I called her. Yeah. But first I think you helped me out with a refrigerator removal or something, or small, two little small jobs here and there. Yeah. And this is funny, every time she finished a job, she'd send me a picture of it. Like, <laughs> like I care if she picked up a $45 refrigerator, you know, <laughs> but she sent me the picture of it and I'm like, okay, okay, I like her, I like this, you know? Yeah. I don't have to call you and ask you if you actually completed the job. Right. Um, and she was sending me pictures of everything. So if I tell her to go, you know, pick up a uh, barbecue grill, she'd send me, the, she'd be right next to the barbecue grill, like taking a <laughs> selfie of it. Um, so that was really cool. And then I said, you know what, let's see how she works. So I gave you, I think it was $400, $300 to fill up your trailer. We yeah. mean you did an eviction. I paid her that. Um, I'm going to tell you about this energizer here, this little battery that I have next to me. She works at a medium speed. There's a high speed, there's a low speed. She's a medium speed, but yeah. the, what I liked about your work ethic is that you don't stop. No. You just don't stop until the job gets done. Cause I got tired, I started drinking water and she's just <laughs> working, she's just working. Uh, since then we have worked together, we've joined up and we actually have a big eviction coming up. Um, next the, week. Next week is it? Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. we joined up, we're gonna do this eviction, but I want you to talk about how you got in this position, how your journey started this. And we thought of a name for this series. So we're gonna do a weekly series on Michelle and it's gonna be called Michelle's Junk Project. It's about being strong and courageous for you ladies out there. So are you are you motivating women to this? Is that what you wanna do? That's what I wanna do. Oh, okay. I wanna share with them and show them how no matter what, you can conquer these things and you can run a junk removal business just like anybody else. Oh, that's awesome. Or better. Or better. Other than Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to be better than him. It's not yet. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, how you started. Uh, give me a little history because I think, you know, I think there's going to be somebody, uh, a young woman out there. She's sitting down. She's watching this video. She's watching you and she's purposely watching this video because of you. And I want you to help her get off that couch. Help her take that next step into a journey into this business. Okay. Okay. So when I was 18, I met my first late husband. He was disabled. His mom was disabled. And we had our son in 91. And I took care of all three of them for 10 years. 24 7 until he passed away in 2000 of one of his medical problems and during that time we were on welfare and I hated welfare I hated every bit of it and I decided when I went back to work I was not ever going to be on welfare again so there was times I had seven jobs I was determined to not get on it if I needed more money I went on Craigslist and looked for other jobs there I just found a way and through all these steps and all these different jobs, I ended up with an opportunity to get my CDL. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not gonna turn down opportunities. So that was actually like a three or four month process. It's not normally that long. It was for me. You failed so, a couple of times, is that? Is that well, I, you know, it's funny you say that. I did fail my, uh, my driving test in the uh, truck right and so i had to do it again 
And when I passed the second time, I was so excited, I kissed the, the trooper on the cheek because <laughs> I couldn't contain it. I was so excited. But it took me like two months to go to truck school, and then I went over the road for like a month because I was still having a hard time trying to figure out how to drive standard. And so when I came back, I drove freight for a couple of years, and I decided, you know, I really want to, I don't like freight. So I thought, oh yeah, fuel trucks have got to be easier. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're, they're pretty hard, especially if you go to like small gas stations. But I loved it. Uh, I really, really loved that job. Um, and it was so funny. Um, there were times that I would be followed from like one location to another. Uh, there were times Oh, that, by men? Oh yeah. So this yeah. was a, this was a male dominated all, mainly, yeah. You had maybe, let's say, 500 guys, or five, yeah, maybe 500 drivers to maybe 10 women in the industry. So, wow. so that's a, that's about 100 uh, men per one woman. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So, yeah, it is definitely male dominated. So you were harassed. You were followed, you were you were doubted probably in something like this. Oh yeah, you know, some of the older truckers, the old school truckers, you know, I had a few of them come up to me and go, why are you out here? And I'm like, I'm doing my job, you know? You're getting paid. I'm getting paid. Right. You know, I know what they were questioning me on, but you know, I'm gonna play dumb with you too. So I'm not gonna answer that question because I'm out here doing my job just like you're out here doing your job. Five foot, 140 pounds, getting harassed, Yep. getting doubted by men in a male dominated uh, industry. Yep. But am I right that you're doing it again in this industry? Because you were in the trucking industry for over 10 years. Correct. Talk to me about when you started doing this industry, this business. T talk to me about some of the challenges you had. So I started my business in 2014. The first two years, I did literally every job by myself because I did not even know where you could find help at. And so... I want to know what kind of truck you had when you first started. And what I were you had, pulling? What were you pulling? What kind of truck you pulling? I think that's too important. I think women out there that are watching this are going to go, wait, 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 slow down, Ricardo. What does she have? Okay, so I started with a 2002 1500 Chevy HD. Or 1500 HD Chevy, mm -hmm. and I started with a what five by eight trailer. I so mean, it's a mini flatbed trailer. It was a yeah. I mean, you couldn't even see it uh -huh. being pulled behind me unless it was stacked high, right? It was such a small trailer. So it was in the back, and if you were looking straight at it, it was yeah. okay. Yeah, right, you couldn't see. Yeah, it was such a small trailer, and I have pictures of it somewhere. And my dad had moved from Colorado to here, and he had an 18 foot enclosed trailer. So he sold it to me for a really good price, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, man, I'm, I got this. And um, so I had that for, I don't know, eight or nine months. And I'm like, man, this sucks because anything you load in it, you have to unload it, right? So I was really wanting a dump trailer. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I found a guy on Craigslist who was building these dump trailers. So they were considered homemade. Mm -hmm. And I had to go through the process of getting a VIN number and all this stuff. But in 2015, I love my dump trailer. Man, I've got a 16-foot yeah. dump trailer. Yeah, you definitely yeah, I do. I love it. You know, uh, I, I love the story so far. I'm getting the idea that your your motto is working out right now you know you you mentioned being strong and courageous yeah um you've defeated the trucking industry you stopped doing the trucking to get into something you know i i can feel that you wanted to move forward and do something else i was wanting more in my life than just showing up for work mm -hmm. you know i wanted to um i definitely wanted to have more control and be able to do more of what I wanted to do and be able to help people as opposed to just kind of coming in and clocking in and going to work and, and working for someone else and working for someone else because you're, you're up here being a trucker and you're busting your ass yeah. nine to five eight to five busting your butt making money for somebody else but now you got this little five by eight trailer yeah and your little Chevrolet and you're making money for yourself am I correct yeah yeah are you telling these women and the women that are watching this video, are you telling them that it's possible? Is that what you're saying to me? It is possible. 
you you got to be determined and don't don't listen to haters but it is possible there's there's nothing you can't do other than what you tell yourself that you can't do i uh I love this story. I, I just love it, and I, I knew we had to tell this story, and that's why I wanted to do the uh, Michelle's Junk Project series, okay? You are being told, you are being harassed, you are being doubted in this business of junk removal. You are a small stature, yeah. okay? You had mentioned a great story to me uh, that I totally love it. I want you to bring it up. I, I know you told me not to mention it, but tell me about the piano. You had a piano <laughs> deal. I want to talk to you. Uh, if you see my, my channel, Junk Removal Service, you'll notice I do pianos and I have done them by myself. And I'm going to tell you, I am 245, I am 6'2", and they are difficult. I've hurt my back and I said I'm never going to do it. I've done like three or four of them and I said, you know, after the fourth one, I'm yeah. not going to do it no more. I will hire somebody to help me out. Yeah. Um, I'm 245 pounds. I weigh 105 pounds more than you. I won't do them by myself. But yeah. you told me this piano story. Not only did she tell me, she has pictures and video on her phone. And she showed me, I was like, are you crazy? So tell me what happened. But I want you to relate this to the women out there about how the man treated you at first when he saw you walk into the house or, or walk onto his property to remove the piano. Well, they were shocked that I showed up by myself because they didn't, you know, Obviously, you need help with the piano. And I've always had help with the piano. But I thought, oh, you know, I did it fine with my guys. Oh, no problem. I could do it myself. And I could, and I did. Uh, it was a little harder. Um, I busted it up and I had to so take it So you took it, it apart? You took it apart? I took it apart. All the way to the heart? Yes, all the way to the heart. Because that's like the worst part of the piano. Yeah. And... That is the worst part. It is. And, you know, I wanted... It was... I had to bring it down eight steps of concrete and really I wanted to chunk it down the steps but you can't do that you don't want to tear up your customers property so Definitely. I dollied it down and it took everything I had and it was about an hour that it took me to get that job done and it was really funny so I sent my customer a text and I said I sent I showed them a picture of it on the trailer and they were so shocked that I did it by myself and I said, I think, that I said, there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. And I said, I think I crossed that today. And he told me the coolest thing. He said, I think you have the confidence to know that you were able to do this. So it was really cool because I'm thinking I was kind of arrogant. And he's telling me, no, I'm really confident. I saw the text. Yeah. I, I did see the text. It's on her phone. It's, it's really cool. Um, he did send you that text, and I'm, yeah. I'm just surprised. I, I'm, I'm having this feeling that these women that are going to watch this video, that you, you're, you are showing them that you're strong, you're courageous, you're able to pull off jobs like this. Um, you notice I've been doing videos about women lately, yeah. right? You mentioned about two videos that you watched, uh, one about Katie Martin, yeah, and then the Iron Lung video. What did, yeah. you, what did you take from those videos? And what can you tell the women out there that are starting their business or wanting to take that step? So this woman's on the couch, she's watching this video. What can you say to her? So obviously you need the right equipment. You need a truck and a trailer. And you really need the right mindset to know that you can do this. And you know, as a woman, you know you're capable of doing it. It doesn't, age doesn't matter. I'm out here doing it at 50, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's just about getting started. Taking that step. Yeah. My sister is what, 52? Yeah. And she moved an iron lung. Yeah. The only one in the United States that's ever been moved by that's a That's crazy. Jump. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, there's only six in the US, by the way. And we happen to have one here in Texas. And that thing weighed a little over 1,100 pounds and she managed to do it with one other person. Yeah. I gave her that job. I wanted her to do that job. What did you take from that video? When you're watching that video, you're going, I could have done that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really funny because sometimes you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know, you know, can she do that? And you watch them and you're just like, you're really proud, right? Because you see what somebody else is capable of doing and you're like, I know I can do that. I can do that. As a woman too. As a woman, yeah. Older woman. 
I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna have to mention. I'm an older person. You know, yes. I'm, I'm 46 years old. You're 50. She's 52. Yes. I, I, I've, I've I saw seen her you work. lift the fridge too. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, that everybody's was... talked about that fridge. It's like the legendary fridge. I've had yes. so many comments about that fridge. This is great. I, I am getting to the point where you're, you're, you can tell these women being strong, being courageous to do this job is something that is achievable. It is. I want to talk about now, because you picked me up this morning. You rode me on something that's awesomeness outside. There's some some white big old. <laughs> tell tell people where you, where you started <laughs> from 2014. Was it 2014 you started junk removal? Yes. Um, name of your business is All Junked Up. All Junked Up. You have a website. All Junked Up dot net. There you go. Dot net. <laughs> and you have a Facebook page. I do. You have social media. Yes. I, I've been on your website. Uh, I want to say something about something I noticed really before we get into anything else is you have, she's so authentic. She's like so Texan. <laughs> she's so Texan. I'm going to tell you why. Her business card, when she handed me her business card, her business card is not about Junker Bowl. It's about a little dog. It's got a little logo of a dog and it says, you know, all around junk. You know, it has your little picture of your dog and, yep. and, and and I asked you, what's this about? And you said, well, my dog passed away six years ago and I still keep him near my side. And, okay. and you told me a great story about it. I don't want to get into it, but you know, it's great. That's Texas. That's what Texas is about, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, tell him about what you pulled up and picked me up in today. So I picked him up in a 2021 F-250 crew cab four by four with the 7.3 Godzilla engine in it. It is a 7.3. It's a beast. It's a beast. It's a big <laughs> truck. I, I have to jump in it to get in it. It's it's, it's so big for I don't know how she would get into it. You have a step? I have a step, yeah. You have a step, yeah. you jump in, she pulls I the step. I have a ladder I keep in the back of the, the bed of the she truck. She takes it so off. I'm, so I can get in and out of the bed without having to jump on it. I, I, this is a great story, <laughs> man. You know, uh, you take before and after pictures of everything you do. You have your, your uh, a logo, uh, your dog that passed away six years ago. As you have a brand new Ford 2021 yeah. 7.3 uh, Ford truck, and you have a 16 foot dump trailer in the back of yeah. it. Um, but you're looking to excel and scale your business. Yeah. We're looking at growing and uh, adding another dump truck to the uh, fleet. Fleet. Um, we want to be able to follow your story. That's why I brought you in, okay? I want to be able to tell this story on a weekly basis. Some of the uh, ups and downs, some of the challenges that you're going to hit on a daily basis of your business. And you don't mind telling those stories? No, no. Because people, oh. are, I think, are going to love this. Yes. Yeah, I love it. Some of them are pretty entertaining. Yeah. I, I've made bets with some of my customers sometimes. Yeah, don't tell you that. Don't okay. say that, okay? Because I think we could save that for the next series. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, we'll guys, keep you hanging. That, that's the, uh, what is it, the cliffhanger? Something the like cliffhanger, that? yeah. Guys, I, first I want to thank you for being on the show. Do you want to say anything else to women? Before we leave, I, I think um, a little, little pep in the step. Ladies, you got this. Be strong, be courageous. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and ask me or DM me. I would be happy to help you get started. Um, there's lots of, of ways to get into the community and get yourself and your business out there to promote yourself. And just know that there is a solution to every problem you're gonna deal with. It may not be the ideal solution, but you got this, and there is a solution, and you know you can do this. I'm doubted sometimes I go to jobs. So I feel for you that I know that sometimes you walk into houses, they look at you, and they're like, she's removing my fridge. Oh yeah. yeah. I I have proof, because she's taking pictures. <laughs> I got a video of that. Yeah, of a, a I, I've seen it. Loaded. Well, Michelle, I, I really appreciate you coming in today. I really think, I'm looking for part two. I'm ready to do part two. I think people are looking uh, for part two, and let's let's do this again. Sounds good. Okay. Like Don't it. forget, guys, I want to say one more time, the Facebook webinar is coming up this Thursday at 11 a.m., February the 10th, okay? So if you're able to get on DM me or Hit me up on uh, email, junkguyscfw at gmail.com. Just ask to be part of it. It's a private 
group webinar on Facebook. Okay, guys, so uh, like I said, go ahead and direct message me or email me at junkitfw at gmail.com. And don't forget, if you like these videos, subscribe over there to the right side on the left side. Check out my other videos. This is the part where we wave. Bye. Bye.